All right, today we are talking about your guide or a guide to using a CMS or a content management system. So what is a CMS? CMS, as I mentioned previously, stands for Content Management System. It's a platform that allows users, even if you don't know, or even if you don't have technical coding experience, to make changes and update a website. So here are some terms you wanna keep in mind and know as you are using a CMS. Different sections are gonna be more relevant to you depending on what you do. So if you are into technical SEO, that might look different than somebody who um, is maybe more of a content creator, content producer. Um, so different people utilize different sections of the website. Maybe if you're a designer, different sections might uh, be more relevant to you, but it's good to know all of these terms regardless so that you can better navigate your CMS. So we've got our admin bar, anchor text, backend, front end, the blog, content or content management system, dashboard, drafts, file transfer protocol or FTP, HTML, plugin, post, page, text editor, and theme. So here are some common CMS platforms. Many of these you've probably heard of, WordPress, Shopify, Squarespace. And depending on who you are working or operating the CMS, or they might even have tools um, that are a little less common. But here are some ones that you've probably heard of. Let's talk about WordPress. WordPress is an online open source website creation tool written in PHP and MySQL. But in a non-geeky way, it's probably the easiest and most powerful blogging and website content management system in existence today. Um, so let's talk about the back end CMS and slash WP admin. So WP admin is the WordPress admin login. It is used to access the back end of the site. So the back end is where all the magic is happening. Most WordPress sites will use slash WP dash admin as their login URL. And the back end is the area where users can sign in to add, remove, and modify content, AKA the magic. Let's talk about your dashboard and an admin bar. In WordPress, a dashboard is the main administration screen for a site or a web blog or for a network of sites. The admin bar is the area of the screen just above your site that is that lists useful administration screen links, such as how to add a new post or edit your profile, uh, maybe edit a user's bio, stuff like that. Themes or skins. A theme is a collection of style templates. A WordPress theme modifies the way the site is displayed and designed without modifying the underlying core programming of the WordPress. Let's talk about some things concerning post fields. So when you are posting content, you have the title and the headline box, which is the title of your post, the body copy box, this is the space where you can enter all of your writing or your content, whatever it is, whether it's long form, short form, or maybe a list or something. You've got the preview button, which is a great tool to see what your content is going to look like before you hit the publish button. Um, this is a tool we re really recommend using because sometimes what you intend versus what gets published might not translate between one another. So this is a great way to find out um, ways you can make tweaks before something goes live. Then we've got the publish box, which contains buttons that control the state of your post, whether you want to publish, unpublish, unlist, delete. We've got the permalink, which stands for permanent link, which is used for titling your URL. The save button, which allows you to save your post as a draft. Um, don't forget to save periodically as you're working on something because you never know. Um, and if something is pending review, you can save it rather than immediately publishing it. Then finally, we've got the publish button, which shows your content and makes something live. And then we've got tags and categorize tags and categories, micro categories and general topics that a blog post can be classified under. So let's say you've got a blog and you've got a ton of content, having things tagged is great to make sure that users who, let's say you have a digital marketing site, users who are only interested in paid search content can click that tag and peruse just the paid search content and they don't have to go sifting through your page to go find what they're looking for or likely um, bounce off of your site because they're not interested in doing all that work. So tags and categories can be a really great way to organize your site. 
So here are some best practices. So in paragraphs, we've got open close with a P in the middle. You wanna make sure you're using headings in HTML. Spell check and proof, there's some really great tools. Um, if you start writing in a Word document, you can use uh, their grammar tool. Grammarly is also pretty good, but also making sure you are combing through your text and then getting a second or third pair of eyes to really comb through your text to make sure um, that it is not only readable, but free of errors. You wanna use pictures or videos too because users just love them. And then finally, as I mentioned previously, save your posts periodically. When writing your posts, you have the option of using a visual or a text mode. The visual mode will let you see your post as is, while the text mode will show you the code um, and replace all of that what you see with what you get, but editor buttons with HTML quick tags. So below, we've got a couple of some quick tags for you to take a look at. Let's talk about plugins using WordPress. A plugin is an add-on that extends or enhances the functionality present in a standard WordPress site. Usually a plugin is a PHP file that can be uploaded to your CMS. And once you install it, the plugins can be turned on or activated. And we've got some examples of this below. Shopify. Shopify, sh <laughs> Shopify is another CMS tool that is primarily used for e-commerce clients, so people who are selling things online. It's great for managing products and product pages, uh, but it also has SEO-friendly capabilities like adding metadata and H1s. However, Shopify can be more limiting in terms of formatting and editing capabilities. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you might want to choose a, CMA, a CMS based on your needs in whatever industry that you're in. And the same too goes for your clients. Squarespace is a CMS platform that has really taken off, um, super popular, and is really easy to really easy to use and also build something that is uh, pretty lovely looking. Squarespace, however, is not the most SEO friendly. In fact, um, it tends to create duplicates of pages and can sometimes overwrite or delete your metadata. Um, so something to keep in mind, it's more um, aesthetically pleasing, but as SEO optimizers or as SEO people, this is something we definitely want to keep in mind, um, especially when we're talking to our clients. So as you are using your CMS, you want to make sure that you have a title, that your metadata is filled, all links open into a new tab. You want to also make sure that you've included headers, bolding, Five, double check your formatting. If it looks funky, use the eraser button to clear it out and start over. Um, this is especially true if you're copying over from a Word document. Sometimes things like bulleted lists or numbered lists can get kind of funky in a CMS. So it might be best to just use the eraser tool, clear it out and um, start afresh. Compare your page to others for the same client to ensure the formatting matches up. This is especially true with colors. Make sure that if, um, your client is using a color that you are matching whatever um, is for their branded content, whatever is important to them for branded content. Make sure you've included internal links. If you have a phone number, use that in the call to action. Use that in the click to call HTML. If schema is applicable, use it. Also, don't worry if you forget anything because you can edit it and hopefully you're also making, you're also saving as you are making those changes. And that was CMS training. Thanks.